Approaching Los Angeles through the desert lands of Southern California, travelers of today seldom realize that only a few generations ago, men in covered wagons blazed trails through this desolate region. Nearing the western edge of the continent, the motorist encounters high mountain ranges and shortly thereafter climbs through a pass where snow-capped peaks rise 10,000 feet on either side. The desert is left behind, and there is revealed a land of bewildering beauty and breathtaking scenery, where giant sword-leaf palms form silhouettes against bright blue heavens, where mountain-rimmed valleys, once thought worthless, have been transformed into a green land by courageous pioneers who have developed some of the most highly productive orchards, vineyards, and ranches in America. This is a land of citrus groves with fragrant blossoms and golden fruit growing in the shadows of purple-hued mountains. A land where weather-beaten missions built by the Spanish Padres to implant the roots of modern civilization still stand as reminders of dim yesterdays. A land of blue ocean beaches where lazy waves curl in from the Pacific and sparkle in the brilliant sun. A land where homes are framed in dreamlike settings, with gardens of gorgeous flowers flaunting the glory of nature throughout the year. The nerve center and capital of this fabulous empire is Los Angeles, youngest giant of American cities. A city that began as a sleepy pueblo in 1781 under the flag of Spain, and has grown into one of the largest and most spectacular communities in the world. A city which has a mood and sparkle a richness and glamour, a heritage from nature, and a way of gracious living that is the envy of people around the globe. A city transformed into bewildering beauty by men of dauntless courage and amazing vision. Everywhere there is an indefinable charm that seems almost unreal in a place that comes from the hurry of millions who work here and make this their home. The hub of Los Angeles is its park-like civic center with buildings of monumental size, the tallest of which is the 32-story City Hall. Nearby is the Los Angeles County Hall of Justice, faced with California granite. Behind the colonnades at the top is the county jail, affording spectacular views for prisoners. The magnificent federal building, which houses the post office and 60 federal agencies, covers a city block and its ultra-modern design emphasizes simplicity. The 20-story Los Angeles County General Hospital is the largest medical institution in the world. Buildings rising majestically all over the city are decentralized to provide easy accessibility. Exclusive apartment hotels overlook beautiful park-like areas. This distinctive apartment house project near Wilshire Boulevard spreads over 176 acres and will eventually accommodate 3,000 families. Modern architecture of downtown buildings features setbacks to capture sunlight, while the stately public library centers in a five-acre park. In the shadow of the city hall is Alvera Street, birthplace of Los Angeles. Folks come here and unknowingly walk over the early settlement's first water ditch. Between old adobe buildings, tiny booths with gay decorations display Mexican foods and trinkets. With flaming forge and anvil, a native craftsman creates wrought iron novelties for visitors. Beside the wheel of an ancient carreta, a bronze-skinned harpist plucks old melodies from strings, hoping for an occasional coin. In a nearby sunny patio is gay music and dancing, reminiscent of old Spanish fiesta days.
Plaza Church, dedicated in 1822, is still used as a place of worship, its open doors inviting the faithful throughout the day and night. In the early days, this land was a semi-arid desert region, non-productive because of lack of water. One of the most dramatic tales in the annals of the world's great cities is how water was brought to Los Angeles from the snow-capped High Sierras lying 240 miles to the north. With great courage, men of vision and determination built a gigantic aqueduct system and trapped the white gold melting and tumbling from these lofty peaks. This undertaking meant not only constructing many miles of concrete-lined canals through vast areas of uninhabited desolate land, but also overcoming mountain barriers that stood in the way by boring long tunnels and laying huge steel siphons to bring this life-giving fluid to a thirsty city. A perpetual flow from the end of the aqueduct is diverted and stored in many large reservoirs, thus ensuring an ample and continuous water supply for a great city of two million people. To provide for the future growth of Los Angeles and Southern California, a second huge aqueduct system has been built, bringing water from Parker Dam on the Colorado River 300 miles to the east. Today, the beauty of Los Angeles is dramatically symbolical of the ancient prophecy that the desert shall bloom like a rose, for this city has become a modern garden of Eden. Luxurious vegetation conceals the once barren areas which challenged man's possession of a land now transformed into a vast empire of man-created beauty. Palatial estates are common here since space is available to enjoy extensive grounds. This is largely a city of homes occupied by individual families, for there is not the congestion of tenement dwellings common to many other cities. Homeowners take pride in keeping their gardens beautiful. Everywhere the eye is greeted by outdoor splendor, for Los Angeles is a botanical wonderland with a never-ending panorama of bright and fascinating blooms. In this land, nature withholds her storms of sleet and snow and engulfs the world with golden warmth. Blooming trees from other lands add their splendor to the landscape, like this fiery red eucalyptus, with its charms caught in fuzzy tufts of color which crowd each other for their place in the sun. The tropical bougainvillea creates billowing masses of purple magenta with heavy vines that grow fantastically to scale trellises. The jacaranda tree bursts forth with clusters of blossoms formed of many pastel-tinted bells. Poinsettias flash their flaming red splendor in fields, gardens, and patios at Christmas time, while many parts of the nation are snowbound. Los Angeles has the highest ratio of automobile ownership of any place on Earth, with five cars to every four families. The air view shows how engineers have overcome complex traffic problems by building a network of broad major freeways which extend throughout the city. They relieve congestion and permit motorists to travel with greater safety and savings of time. Devoid of street intersections, this freeway curves through landscape terrain and makes possible an uninterrupted flow of motor cars. This superhighway system introduces an efficient method of routing traffic advantageously. Coenga Pass, with eight traffic lanes connecting Hollywood and the San Fernando Valley, was only a dusty trail in 1847 when the Mexican government signed a treaty on this spot, relinquishing Los Angeles to the United States. Here is famous Wilshire Boulevard, called the Fifth Avenue of the West. Running from downtown to the sea, it is one of the most beautiful boulevards in the world. Carrying a continuous cavalcade of automobiles, it bisects territory which was farmland only 30 years ago. The University of California at Los Angeles is one of the foremost educational centers in America. Once considered only a small brother of the State University at Berkeley, it has since achieved high rank among the great institutions of learning. More than 14,000 students are enrolled here annually, majoring in the arts and sciences. Across the city, the symbolical Trojan guards the campus of the University of Southern California. 
With an enrollment of approximately 16,000 students, this is the largest and oldest university of continuous existence in Southern California. Its buildings and grounds cover 45 acres, and it has graduated many thousands of men and women who are now leaders in the business and professional world. Friendly rivalry between USC and UCLA reaches its climax each year when the football teams of the two institutions clash on the gridiron. This is one of the West's most colorful events, and loyal boosters for both sides more than fill the 100,000 seats in the huge Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum to witness the bitterly fought contest which holds the attention of followers of collegiate sports everywhere. Besides the big game itself, the day is always memorable with the pageantry of marching bands, colorful parades, and spectacular stunts which are carried out on the field and in the stands with military precision. Hollywood, the kingdom of glamour, where romance, adventure, and comedy are recorded on celluloid for millions to see and hear. And here's the famous boulevard, where stars go shopping and internationally adopted fashions are originated. This is Hollywood and Vine, the crossroads of film land. Two blocks away is Sunset and Vine, where the first film studios were located when these streets were still dirt roads. Today, magnificent radio and television studios rise in this area, from which dozens of network shows are broadcast daily, many of them starring the greatest names of the motion picture industry. One of the world's most noted palaces of entertainment and the Hollywood landmark is Grauman's Chinese Theater. Its pagoda-like entrance representing the gate to an enclosed temple garden. Recorded in slabs of cement in the forecourt are the signatures plus imprints of the feet and hands of leading motion picture stars, together with greetings to the builder of this bizarre and interesting structure. The best way to get a comprehensive view of a motion picture studio is from the air. This is the 20th Century Fox lot, with many acres of gigantic sound stages and outdoor sets. Here, directors may shoot pictures authentically reproducing any scene from the North Pole to the tropics without ever leaving the studio. Studio lots are ordinarily closed to visitors, but by special permission, we now take you behind the scenes at RKO to let you watch the making of that romantic picture, Baltimore Escapade. Director Richard Wallace signals for a take as the actors await their cues. The action takes place in bygone horse and buggy days. This picturesque street scene has been created by set builders whose genius makes it look amazingly real. Our star follows the camera as it rolls back. Do you recognize her? Here, we'll give you a closer look while the still cameramen get publicity pictures. Yes, you're right. It's lovely Shirley Temple. Producer Richard Berger and Shirley discuss the next scene and smile for our cameraman. This sound man with his magic box is responsible for mixing and balancing the voices of the actors. While here, at the same time, the dialogue is electrically recorded on film and an accurate log kept of every take. One of the photographic crews goes for a sky ride on a giant camera crane. This ingenious mechanism can be maneuvered into any position necessary to get unusual and interesting angle shots. The studio has its own railroad train which are steamed up for scenes like this. Ace cinematographer Robert DeGrasse checks lighting effects. There's action at the depot, and Robert Young steps out of the shadows to face the camera. While waiting for her next take, Miss Temple is being retouched by her makeup artist, Carl Herlinger, Jr. This business of making a motion picture is not as easy as it looks. It's a job that requires a high degree of intelligence, plus technical skill and infinite patience. It takes many months of intensive efforts to produce a picture of this type. 
scenes are often shot and reshot many times in order to meet the director's exacting demand for perfection. The artists and technicians seen here are only a small part of the vast force of studio workers required to handle a production. Well, would you look at this contraption? Wonder what that girl is up to now. Well, so long, Shirley. Put on your goggles and watch out for the speed cop. Motion picture premieres in Hollywood are gala events, and as lights glitter, thousands of fans turn out to catch a glimpse of their favorite stars who attend these colorful showings. Celebrities in formal dress gossip excitedly inside the theater lobby during a premiere, which might launch an unknown to stardom. Filmland's most dazzling scene is Santa Claus Lane at Christmas time, when movie stars ride down the boulevard with old St. Nicholas. Hollywood does not forget the spiritual values of life, and as the Easter morning sun breaks through the mists of dawn, white robed heralds standing beneath the silhouetted cross above the Hollywood Bowl sound their trumpets, giving the glad signal commemorating Christ's resurrection from the dead. A spellbound audience watches the stage where a children's choir forms a human cross and sings Hallelujah, the thrilling song of praise and joy, which reaches out clearly to the Father's person in the bowl. 30,000 seats are filled and overflowing to the chaparral-covered hills above. The great San Fernando Valley is only one corner of Los Angeles. It is so spread out and so extensive that it can be best appreciated from the air. Farms and orchards have given way to golf courses, motion picture studios, aircraft and automobile plants and other manufacturers. Where Spanish caballeros formerly ran cattle, are many thousands of beautiful homes and picturesque rancho estates of the wealthy. Symmetrically planted orchards and truck gardens spread their greenery, bisected by networks of highways. Cheap hydroelectric power has made Los Angeles the fastest growing industrial city in the world. This has been made possible through impounding waters of the Colorado River behind Hoover Dam, where monster generators driven by water turbines create millions of kilowatts of electricity, which are carried 266 miles across the desert to Los Angeles over high-tension power lines, where it is fed into thousands of industries. With this low-cost hydroelectric power available in abundance, Los Angeles launched a tremendous industrial expansion, where bean fields grew only 20 years ago. Today, the framework of huge modern factories of every type bring their patterns against the skyline. Los Angeles has become a second Detroit in the assembling of automobiles. It produces more tires and rubber goods than any city in the world except Akron, Ohio. It has scores of foundries where iron and steel are cast into forms to create many thousands of items. Giant industries manufacture machinery and tools of every kind. And great lathes shape raw steel into precision equipment. This air view shows only a few of the thousands of oil derricks near Los Angeles, which pump black gold day and night to provide a continuous supply of gasoline and other petroleum products for world markets. Even before the war, Los Angeles was the leader in aircraft production, and today its scores of tremendous plants are producing every type of plane needed for both civilian and military purposes. Planes built here are in demand around the globe. Today, more than 400,000 production workers receive regular income from approximately 8,000 industrial plants and factories in the Los Angeles area, the majority of which have been started in the last 10 years. Los Angeles has the world's greatest man-made harbor. Men have shaped here a modern miracle from what was once mudflats and desolation, making this phenomenal change in one generation. Wharves, sheds, and other port facilities are owned by the city of Los Angeles. One of the major ports of the Pacific, it serves 5,000 steamships a year, has 28 miles of water frontage, is surrounded by huge manufacturing plants, refineries, shipyards, dry docks, and canneries. 
80 ocean liners may be berthed at one time. Hundreds of pleasure craft are moored inside Los Angeles Yacht Harbor, emphasizing the lure of the sea in Southern California. Getting a close-up view of this palatial yacht from a harbor launch also reveals the masts of scores of smaller sailing craft nearby. Freight carriers and tankers, each worth a fortune in itself, call here from all parts of the globe, transporting priceless cargo which America requires to supply its economy. At dockside, a crane unloads a consignment of goods from the Orient. Nearby, another carrier takes on merchandise and grain, which is going to hungry and destitute people overseas. Luxurious ocean liners carry passengers on regular schedule. This great white steamship, which is one of the queens of the sea, is ready to sail for far-off Pacific ports. There is a festive holiday spirit as gay serpentine streamers flutter in the breeze. A tiny tugboat helps this floating palace head for the open sea. Leaving the harbor, we salute ships that carry our flag around the world. New ideas have a way of popping up in Los Angeles, like this unique farmer's market, which daily attracts thousands of shoppers and tourists who wander through long aisles of booths where farmers display products grown in their own land nearby. Originally started on a small scale, the market has since grown into a fantastic village where edibles of all kinds are offered for sale in the bustling atmosphere of a county fair. Open air exhibits reveal the sparkling beauty of dew fresh produce. Man, look at those strawberries, picked at the crack of dawn. Visitors may dine in the alluring atmosphere of sunny outdoor patios, which are framed with shrubbery and trees. Socialites, housewives, film celebrities, and businessmen come here relax and enjoy food typical of many nations. Los Angeles parks are picturesque with beautiful lakes where folks may enjoy boating and other outdoor relaxation. Right in the heart of downtown Los Angeles is Pershing Square in a setting as exotic as the court of some ancient temple in a tropical jungle where sun worshippers are entertained by soapbox orators discussing ideologies and world politics. Pride of Los Angeles is Griffith Park. More than 3,700 acres of wooded mountains, meadow-like valleys, picnic and playgrounds. Many thousands come here daily to enjoy the stimulating beauty and grandeur of the great outdoors, which lies within minutes of the hustle and bustle of the mighty city. Here, children can play and race to their heart's content. Hi there, Butch. How about a smile for the folks? Outdoor festivals keep alive the spirit of fiesta time, which brought romance and gaiety to California in the days of the dawn. Under blue dome skies, children stage pageants, march to lilting music, and do folk dances. The world-famed Griffith Observatory and Planetarium, high on a mountaintop overlooking the city, offers many interesting exhibits including an amazing mechanical model of the solar system, which has fascinated millions. Folks love to watch the thoroughbreds. At colorful Santa Anita Park following Christmas, thousands come to see the most carefully groomed and trained steeds vie for the honors of the turf. Excited crowds cheer the ponies while the sun pours gold on the track and purple shadows settle upon the nearby mountains. Each event creates a tingling thrill, and watching human emotion soon reveals if the individual's favorite horse has won or lost. On the other side of town, picturesque Hollywood Park is the scene of summer racing. Nerves tighten as fleet horses with their eager jockeys come pounding down the track. Because of mild climate and abundant sunshine, folks in Los Angeles participate in health-building outdoor sports the year-round. The great American game is played with rabbit enthusiasm by numerous neighborhood teams slugging in out on weekends in playgrounds and city parks. Los Angeles golfers have access to scores of public and private courses. Many national and regional golf tournaments are staged here both winter and summer. 
Intense local interest in the game is indicated by these tremendous galleries of fans who turn out by the thousands to watch eagerly the world's finest golfers battle for honors. This city has developed many local and national tennis champions. There are 50 private tennis clubs and scores of city-owned courts where thousands may enjoy this game. Polo, fast and dangerous, is a nerve-tingling sport for rugged men with keen eyes and strong wrists and requires ponies highly trained for trigger-quick action. Bowling on the green is a game the older folks play with vest and team competition. Many retired men and women find this diversion a fascinating sport. There are thousands of swimming pools in private yards in Los Angeles, providing another reason for outdoor living. And it's a common sight to see families and friends spend the whole of a sunny day in bathing suits. It's a far cry from the old swimming hole to modern plungers like this, operated by the city, so children can learn to swim and dive under the guidance of expert instructors. Fancy diving is really beautiful to watch and looks easy to do, but actually it is one of the most difficult of all sports to master. It is only through constant practice of style, balance, and rhythmic timing that these young aquatic stars have achieved such perfection and superb control. Slow motion catches the full beauty of the swan dive. The daring young man on the flying trapeze certainly has nothing on this fellow. Why climb back up, he says, when there's a shortcut like this. Here's swimming champions race, fighting seconds with each breath and stroke. Sunlight breaking through crystal clear waters of the pool creates a spectacular view of this exciting race. It is fascinating to watch these men, who are among the world's finest swimmers, coordinate every stroke and body movement into the harmonized power which gives them such amazing speed. Within easy driving distance of Los Angeles are many miles of inviting ocean playgrounds that lure vast throngs on weekends and holidays. Probably nowhere else in the world are there so many beautiful bathing beaches with picturesque coves and gently sloping sands. Fringed by the waters of the Pacific, these great outdoor recreation areas bring pleasure to millions. What is more invigorating than riding the crest of billowing waves or plunging into the foaming breakers for a tingling swim. There is a world of fun for young and old at the seashore. Folks can spend the day reveling in water sports while bodies receive beneficial contact with the brilliant sun or relax lazily on the sparkling sand. This is famous Muscle Beach, where the younger generation puts on free exhibitions of physical fitness and bodybuilding. Symbolizing a new race of sturdy, athletic Americans, these people engage in amazing acrobatics which require well-rehearsed coordination. Believe it or not, they're not trying for jobs in the movies or the circus. It's all in fun. This typical model of muscle shows how trained biceps respond to orders while admiring spectators watch with interest. Volleyball is a favorite sport at the beach for ambitious young folks like these, whose healthy bodies are bronze-colored from long hours in the sun. The numerous harbors and bays near Los Angeles draw thousands of skippers who own their own boats and spend weekends enjoying one of the oldest and most thrilling sports known to man. It is a common sight to see fleets of beautiful sailboats in action, many with youngsters at the tiller, handling sails like veteran seamen. Here, children find happiness, bubbling in on every wave. Yes, this is the land of the rainbow's end, where outdoor pageantry enraptures the soul, where man lives longer and better and breathes the air of a newfound world. The deep inviting charm of this fabulous metropolis is like a magnet drawing millions of persons from the four corners of the earth. Los Angeles needs no profit to foretell its greatness. Brought from the once parched desert by men of fierce courage and zealous vision, it has grown more rapidly than any great city in the history of mankind. 
It has become the citadel of a new civilization. It is truly a city of destiny.